Okay, let's find the area of this shaded region. What do we have here? Something minus something. What shapes do we have? So it looks like it is a square that is 6 by 6. And then it looks like it's a semicircle and a semicircle, which makes a whole circle. So it looks like we're going to find the area of the square minus the area of a circle, because two halves make a whole. Okay, so the area of the square would be 36. The area of the circle would be pi r squared. So the radius of that circle would be half of the diameter. So the radius would be 3, 3 squared. So if we wanted to write our answer a little bit better, it would be 36 minus 9 pi. We were not going to combine that because we want to keep our answer exact. These are the answers to the first page of the circles homework. We had a lesson on Friday. It was area and circumference of circles. So the homework looks like this. And you're asking if we always keep our answers exact. Um, when The only time we round is when um, our problem is a real-world problem. So like it, when it's a story, when someone is actually doing something in the real world, a lot of times we round. But other than that, every other time we keep it exact. If the directions don't say what to do, then you keep it exact. Take some time to check your answers. Number 12 on the circle's homework says find the area of each circle with the given circumference. So if my circumference is 3.5 pi, I know that circumference is pi times diameter. I know my diameter is 3.5. I'm trying to find my area. Area is pi r squared. You can't do area without a radius. So I would need to take my diameter. I know that the diameter is double the radius. So I will divide my diameter by 2. So I will have 1.75 squared, pi r squared, and you get 3.0625. Now, you could write that with pi. You could. That could be your answer, and that's okay because this decimal ends. It doesn't go on forever. But in the answers that we typed up, we wrote it as a fraction. 49 over 16 pi. You never know what you're going to get. Um, so you could have also put 49 over 16 pi. So you can always put the fraction or the decimal form if your decimal does not go on forever. Okay? Um, the next one, number 13. The radius of the signal of a radio station extends 78 kilometers from the base of the tower. What's the area of the region that the signal can reach? So, like, here's the radio tower, and it has a signal, and it can reach all of these people. All these people can hear this radio station. So it extends 78 kilometers all the way around that region. You know how when you're in the car and the radio's going, and then all of a sudden you kind of move out of their, their radius of where they project the radial waves and then it turns into static. So that's what this is talking about. What's the area of the region? It's just pi r squared. So you just have to square 78 and multiply that one by pi. Area was the key word there. 14. Suppose a square with an area of 100 is inscribed in a circle. So it's, it's really, it's this picture right here. A square is inscribed in a circle. It has an area of 100. So we know the sides. The square root of 100 is 10. Find the circumference and area of the circle. So this is the same problem as number 6, except the side is 10 this time. Um, we, let's draw ourselves a radius. We want to find the radius because then we will know the area and the circumference once we know the radius. Um, we know that this is 5, and we know this is 45, 45, 90, 5, 5, 5 root 2. So it looks like the radius is 5 root 2. So the circumference would be 
10 root 2 pi, right, pi times diameter. And then the area would be pi r squared. 5 squared is 25. Square root of 2 squared is 2. So that's why the area is 50 pi. What we're going to do today is we're actually going to do the circles worksheet page 2. And we're just going to do all these problems one at a time. I'm going to capture the problem. You're going to solve it. And then we're going to check our answer. And then I'll capture the next problem. And everyone will solve it. And we'll check our answers. Okay, number 15. Here we go. We know that this is a rectangle, so area of the rectangle minus the area of the circle. So this one's not a bad one to start off on. The area of a rectangle would be 21 times 4, 84, minus the area of the circle could be a little bit tricky, but it shouldn't be. Notice that from here to here, it's 4. That's the same as from here to here. It's 4. So we know our diameter is 4, making our radius 2. So the area of that circle is pi r squared, pi times 2 squared. And we have now done number 15. Woo! Okay, what's going on in number 16? I always write down the strategy first. This is which figure is larger. This is area of a circle minus area of a square. We have to assume that's a square because if it's not, we couldn't solve this problem, okay? So let's do the area of the circle first. We just did the area of a circle with a radius of 2 in our last problem. So pi r squared, we know the area of the circle is going to be 4 pi. Now we have to find the area of the square. I recommend drawing another radius which is also 2, 2, 2, 2 root 2. So I know that the area of the square is side squared. So 2 squared is 4. The square root of 2 squared is 2. 4 times 2 is 8. It's not 8 pi because it's just a square. Don't attach pi to everything these days, only to things that are circular. Good, 4 pi minus 8. Let's keep going. Now, on problems like this, sorry that the picture's a little off, when something looks like a semicircle, a, about half of a circle, you're allowed to assume it's a semicircle. Because if it was like three-fourths of a circle, we'd be in trouble. We wouldn't really know what to do. So we are allowed to assume it's a semicircle. So what is this problem? It's area of hexagon minus area of a semicircle. So we're going to have to divide the circle by 2. Don't forget that part. Okay, so area of the hexagon. Let's just dive into that one. Now, a hexagon is one of our special cases, so we don't have to use trig. In our hexagon, we always draw an apothem and a radius. Half of the side is 4. 4 is across from 30, so the apothem is 4 root 3. And now we're ready to find the area of the hexagon. Apothem times perimeter. Let's see, there's eight. There's six sides, and they're each eight long, and then divided by 2. So we ignore the root 3. We plug everything else in our calculator. 4 times 8 times 6 divided by 2, and we get 96 root 3. We okay with that? Area of a hexagon, it's good practice. Now, area of the semicircle. So we're going to do pi r squared, but we're not going to forget to cut it in half because it's only a half circle. What is the radius of that semicircle? It is 4. So pi times 16 divided by 2. 16 divided by 2 is 8. Okay, this is number 18. This one is a little confusing because of how the picture's labeled. I didn't make this picture. I'm so sorry. This is a 30 degree angle, and this means that the radius is 4. So that could have been confusing from the start if you didn't even know what those numbers meant. 
This is, of course, area of a circle minus area of a triangle. Another piece of information that you didn't already know was that when an angle opens up to the diameter of a circle, it's a right angle. Every time, all the time, no matter what, we'll learn this in our circles unit. So, yes, that is a right angle right there, even though we haven't learned that yet. Okay. All right, so let's find the area of the circle first, because that, quite frankly, is going to be the easiest part of this problem. Pi r squared. Is it okay if I just write 16 pi? Okay. Now, area of the triangle. Base times height divided by 2. Your base and your height are the two sides that are perpendicular. Base and height. I don't care which one is which. They are interchangeable, but make sure you're using the two sides that are perpendicular. So, um, this side is 8. That means across from 30 is 4, and that means across from 60 is 4 root 3. So, it's base times height divided by 2. So, it's 16 root 3 divided by 2, which gets us, gets us 8 root 3. Do you see how all of these answers are? We're keeping them exact, which means we're not combining them. We're keeping them separate unless we have like terms. 16 pi minus 8 root 3. 19, this is a good one. We're doing the area of a rectangle minus the area of, how many circles do we have? Yeah. So, two, you can put 2.5 circles if you want. That's not, it's not like I'm going to grade your strategy. I always write the strategy at the top. That part won't be graded. You can write it however you want. Two and a half, um, however you want to phrase that for sure. Five halves. Okay, so the radius is three for all circles. So, you're like, how in the world are we going to find the area of that rectangle? We need a length and a width. Don't worry, we can do it. If the radius is three, how many radii do we have? That makes sense. One, two, three, four, five. So this is 15. And then this is a radius. And this is a radius. So do you see where we're getting the dimensions of our rectangle? Oh, not nine, six. I know, I know, I know, I know. I was multiplying. I know. Okay. 15 times six. So the area of our rectangle is 90. Now let's find the area of two and a half circles. So all we have to do is find the area of one circle and multiply it by 2.5. The area of a circle is pi r squared. So we're just doing 9 times 2.5. You can keep it as um, a decimal, but I, in my typed up answers, I have it as a fraction. But if you have 22.5 pi, that would not be wrong. Once again on number 20, you did have to know the fact that when an angle opens up to the diameter, it is a right angle. So go ahead and add that right angle marking even though we haven't learned that yet. Um, we've done this before, area of a circle minus area of a triangle. The area of that circle is pi r squared. Pi, the radius is 5. So pi r squared. So the area of our circle is 25 pi. The area of the triangle, base times height divided by 2. We know the base and the height are always perpendicular. And this is a right isosceles triangle. 45, 45, 90. So we need to find the legs of that triangle, and we know we divide by root 2, and then we rationalize. But you probably already knew that it was 5 root 2. You do not have to go through all those steps if you already knew it was. So we're doing base times height divided by 2. 5 root 2 times 5 root 2 divided by 2. Okay, so let's do all this. Let me change colors. 5 times 5 is 25. Square root 2 times square root 2 is 2. Divide by 2. The 2's cancel. 
And you were right, 25 pi minus 25 doesn't equal 0 pi, right? Could you imagine if someone actually did subtract those? 0 pi, your answer would be 0, and we know that's not the answer. That's why we don't subtract them. Number 21, this one's going to be area of a trapezoid. I don't want to put T because I use that for triangle, huh? Minus area of a circle. We haven't done trapezoid in a while. Base 1 plus base 2 times the height divided by 2. We have base 1, we have base 2. What's the height of that trapezoid? Use the radius, hint, hint. Good. So it's 3 plus 3. If the radius is 3, it's 3 all the way around. So the height is 6. So base 1 plus base 2 times the height divided by 2. So we have 26 times 6 divided by 2. The area of the trapezoid is 78. The area of the triangle is quite easy. Pi r squared. I'm not even going to show work. Pi r squared. Whew, that one wasn't bad. All right, so for this one, it's, it's really area of a circle minus area of the circle. Obviously, we're going to do the larger circle minus the smaller one. We had one just like that in our notes on Friday. Um, so, the area of the larger circle is not hard. The radius of the larger circle is 3. So, it's pi r squared. It is 9 pi. Now, unfortunately, the radius of the smaller circle is a decimal because 3 is odd. So this one's going to be pi r squared. We're going to have to square 1.5. I personally am going to put it into fraction form, but you don't have to. This is the first time in this whole worksheet that we can actually combine our answers. They are like terms. You do not have to do this by hand, because in geometry you're allowed to use a calculator. So 9 minus 9 fourths. And then I just do math, enter, enter. So I get 27 fourths pi. If you put 6.75 pi, that is okay too. Those are both completely acceptable. Number 23. Always write the strategy down first. Area of a square minus area of a circle. We have to assume it's a square or else we could not solve this. It is a square if a circle is circumscribed in it, though. So the area of a square, that's not bad. If the radius is 6, then the diameter is 12. That happens to be the side of the square. So we know that 12 squared is 144. And then the area of the circle is also super easy, pi r squared, 36 pi. Not bad at all. Okay. Okay. 24. Find the area of the composite figure. There's really no other way to go about this other than finding the area of each shape one at a time. We've got a triangle, we've got a rectangle, and we've got a parallelogram. I usually just find their areas and write it inside the shape and just add them together. There's no subtracting here. Okay. That 16 almost got cut off, so be careful. Um... This is 7, this is 3, so what is the, this will be the height, what's the height of the parallelogram? So we're going to do segment addition, 7 plus 3 plus something equals 16. So the height of that parallelogram is 6, I hope that's okay. Um, since it's a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. So we are allowed to assume if this is 9, and we know, we're not even assuming, we know that this is 9. I think we have all the information we need. Okay, for this triangle, it is base times height divided by 2. The base is 9 because we got that from the parallelogram. The height is 7. Divided by 2, 31.5. Next one, rectangle, 3 times 9. 
base times height, 3 times 9, 27. Next one, parallelogram, base times height, not so bad, oh, 54, sorry. I know. And final answer, 112.5. So what is going on here? How are we going to do this one? I actually recommend on this one that we do rectangle, this rectangle, that rectangle, the area of the rectangle minus, just like you said, the area of one-fourth of a circle minus the area of a triangle. That's what I would recommend on this one. So, let's find the area of the rectangle. Let's see, it looks like, hmm, if the radius is 30 here, then the radius is 30 here. Do you get where I got this 30 from? Because it's the radius of the circle. So the this length, the base or the height or the width, whatever you want to call it, is 90. What about over here? Well, once again, the radius of the circle is still 30. So 30 plus 30 is 60. So that rectangle is 90 by 60, 5,400. Okay, the area of one-fourth of a circle. The area of a circle is pi r squared, but we're going to divide it by 4. Forget what we get for that one. Two twenty-five. Now we need to find the area of this triangle. So let's see. What's ninety minus forty-five? Do you see how that makes this one 45? Because it's 90 all the way across and we've used up 45. Okay, good. Um, the whole height, we know this side is 60. So triangle is base times height divided by 2. I would consider this a K-level problem, wouldn't you? 1,350. Now we combine like terms. We are allowed to subtract the... 5,400 and the 1,350. We're allowed to subtract those. So we get 4,050 minus 225 pi. And that is the final answer. Sorry, millimeters squared on the recorded lesson. Um, yes, very good point. Totally just could have done a trapezoid minus a fourth of a circle. I love when you guys see things that I don't necessarily see right away. I guess because they had this X here, I felt like I needed to find that link. I don't know. But no problem. That's great. That's better. That's faster. Good job. This one really is not as intimidating as it looks. We don't have to find the perimeter. Woo! So we just have to find the area. That's great. So let's divide this up. I would just divide it here and here. You can divide it however you want. Length times width. Let's see. Here's the length. What's the width? 2 plus 3. Does that look good? 5. Making sure. 3 by 5. 15. So we've got 9. We've got 15. And this one's 3 by 10. Whoa, that's the easiest one we've done all day. 30 plus 15 plus 9. Nice to have a mental break on that one. Last one, woo, 27, okay, what do we have here? Trapezoid, trapezoid, plus, not minus, 1.5 circles, it's a cupcake, okay, trapezoid plus 1.5 circles. All right, let's find the area of the trapezoid. 
base 1 is 6. Okay, use that. Plus base 2, let's see, 3 plus 3 plus 3, right? 6 plus 9, 12. 13 plus 9, 13. 14 plus 9, 14. 15 plus 9, 15. 16 plus 9, 16. 17 plus 9, 17. 18 plus 9, 18. 19 plus 9, 19. 20 plus 9, 20. 21 plus 9, 21. 22 plus 9, 22. 23 plus 9, 23. So the area of the trapezoid... Is 45. Okay, we want area of one circle and then we want to multiply it by 1.5. Um, what's the radius of one circle? It's kind of confusing because the radius is 1.5, right? Or three halves. So pi r squared, but we don't want just one of them, we want one and a half of them. You could also use three halves instead of 1.5 if you want. You're going to get 27 eighths or 3.375. I don't care which one, but on my answers, I have 27 eighths. That was ugly, sorry. This one we're adding because we're not taking anything away. 